Hey guys, Dell here today to share a video, the core of which will be the black jackets in my collection. I have six black leather jackets and two black denim jackets. And I want to share this with you because the people have been clamoring to see my collection. They've just been wanting to see all the coolness that's been hiding in my closet. <laughs> well, maybe, hopefully. Uh, but I actually have three other reasons why folks could get some value out of seeing this portion of my wardrobe. Reason one, maybe you're considering buying a jacket like this, a denim jacket or a black leather jacket or vest, and there's nothing quite like direct comparison to help you see how a jacket does. Now I've worn the same outfit with each of these jackets so that you can have just the jacket changing for comparison. And if you're a comparison chopper, that could be a real helpful eight minutes or so coming up whenever I do wear that, uh, those different items. The second reason I wanted to share is I wanted to emphasize the importance of building variety into your wardrobe when you're buying items. And this is especially important because people make buying decisions emotionally and leather jackets can really be cool. And if you're handling one in person, you can say, man, this is the jacket I want. I'm going to get this one. It's just the coolest. Or you see a deal on something, a jacket that would normally be pretty expensive. Something pops up in the used market or eBay or a seller puts something on discount. And man, you really need to get that jacket. But wait, wait, you need to, you need to think about this first. Put your thinking hat on real quick. Does it feel a part of your wardrobe that is a gap? If not, you might end up with a bunch of very similar styles and that could be what you're going for. But I found if, you know, if you are looking to build a wardrobe out that can be used in a variety of situations, variety of wardrobe can be key. Uh, number three, and this is kind of a nebulous one, which is one, it has taken me a while to get to this point of having these eight items. It didn't just happen overnight that these jackets walked into my closet and I had eight items that I'm super happy with. I went through a bunch of jackets that I ended up not liking for whatever reason, whether that's fit or the style just ended up being not one that I like or a comfort aspect where after wearing it for long enough, it started bothering my shoulder. You know, these things, these things are hard to find out if you're just trying on a jacket. You really have to wear them. You have to go out and use them to know if they're going to work for you. There is some trial and error that that took place to get to these eight jackets. And if you go and look at my Instagram, for example, you'll see way more than eight black jackets uh, if you go through the history there. And you know, that that's the price that it takes to get there. There's the trial and error. So people stress a lot, I feel, over trying to get the perfect fit on their first jacket. It just may not happen, it may, but don't necessarily go into it expecting it and just do your best and treat everything as a learning experience. And you'll always be working towards refining what you have to be what you want. And also the second kind of little part of this number three, which is I also want to kind of deflate a notion that I might have a huge number of jackets in my collection that I just have a massive closet and it's just bursting to the seams with leather jackets. Uh, this is not true. Uh, I have the eight items, the six jackets and two denim jackets. Um, but I know the impression exists, it can exist, and based off of comments that people have made, that I just have a huge number of jackets in my collection, which isn't true. So trying to be transparent here about that. We're about to move into those jackets and checking out the different styles. Uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments. Uh, I haven't done reviews on all of these yet, so you can see this as a little mini intro to each of that style of jacket that I haven't done a deep dive on yet. And if you will hit me up in the comments with your favorites or ones you wanna know more about, I'll do my best to make that a priority to get that video out to you. All right, first up we have this Shot Perfecto. It's model number 618. This is the classic Shot Perfecto. This is also a very short jacket. <laughs> Some people are surprised by that. It's made to ride on a motorcycle in a sitting position wherein a longer jacket would bunch up on you. So it is made to be short. You might prefer to wear it with higher rise pants than you see here. That's a great choice. I do that. I also don't mind seeing both belt buckles. Some people bothers them. This jacket's made in what they call steer hide, which is just a very sturdy cowhide with a thick top coat. 
Doesn't show age very much, unless you really beat it up. This jacket's from the 90s and it looks basically new. Just a fantastic motorcycle jacket and kind of the archetypal motorcycle jacket. All right, second jacket we have here is a vintage Cal Leathers jacket, a California Highway Patrol style jacket made in the 50s or early 60s. I suspect it's made out of horse hide due to the quality of the grain in this jacket, though I have no confirmation of that. The only tag on the inside indicates it's made by Cal Leathers. Uh, this jacket nearly breaks my variety rule, by the way. I have another motorcycle jacket, the Shot Perfecto, but I am, I guess, a bit of a collector in the sense that I really wanted this jacket. I think it does veer more into the heavy duty side of things than my Shot Perfecto does, so I gave it a pass and decided to buy it. This jacket nearly weighs eight pounds, but does not feel it on. It has a very thick satin lining. It's, it's honestly a super comfortable jacket to wear for how hardcore it kind of looks. And uh, there's a reason why this jacket is so prized by collectors. It's just a fantastic jacket. All right, third jacket on the list is this Langlitz Timberline. It is a custom jacket made out of what they call medium weight cowhide, but what almost anyone else would call heavyweight cowhide. This jacket is really the cafe racer in my collection. It's got the straight zip, it's got the collar, it's got the pocket arrangement. It also has this interesting kind of detailing stitching across the chest and the padded elbows. Those things are really make it a Langlitz jacket in my mind. And just a really well-built jacket, really love this jacket and the folks over at Langlitz. Uh, I do have a deep dive on this jacket that I should perhaps revisit. It's a 17 minute long video. <laughs> Fourth jacket here is this ELMC Californian. This is a new jacket in the style of a vintage half belt from the 40s or 50s. It's in a very lightweight horse hide. It's very easy wearing. This jacket probably notches a little bit lower on the durability scale than the first three that you've seen. However, it remains a leather jacket. This is a tough garment and it brings a higher degree of refinement and less of the motorcycle into things and more of the casual wear or even to dress up, perhaps. You could replace a blazer if you are feeling daring. And I've done so and love it with this jacket. Just a fantastic repro by ELMC. Number five is this shot Western suede fringe jacket. I have been looking for one of these for a very long time in black. Very often they come up in these tan or buckskin style colors. I was super happy to find this black one. The arms are a little long and the jacket is a little oversized, but I think that kind of goes with the style. And just look at that fringe. Come on now. Amazing. Uh, some people don't want to wear fringe and have very strong opinions about fringe on jackets but I think it's cool and why not roll with it if you think it's cool.
Six up on the list is this Horsehide Deep Pocket Vest from Cushman out of Japan. It's a newest item on the list to me. And I gotta say, even though I'm still in the honeymoon period with this vest, I am super pleased with it. I find it to be kind of strikingly versatile. I wore it with a t-shirt and jeans. I've worn it with dress trousers and snap shirt and a tie. And really everything in between I think it can go with. This is a versatile vest if you like motorcycle jacket styling. Uh, the weight of it, it's very light. It's the lightest weight of these items. It does have a cloth backing on it to give some amount of form to that lightweight hide. I think it just makes such a perfect piece for hotter weather. Number seven on the list in the first of the denim jackets. This is from Mr. Freedom. It's what they call the Continental Sport Coat in JC Black Denim. JC standing here for Johnny Cash. Uh, what this is is an indigo and then they over dye it black. It weighs in about 12 ounces and as it is worn, that black over dye chip away and fade away and reveal the blue indigo all the way down to the white threading. So this jacket will fade over time pretty dramatically. Uh, something that Mr. Freedom is known for. But right now it mainly shows a little bit of blue around the edges. I think it's just a great kind of refined, casual jacket. And it's an easy wearing 12 ounces. Number eight on the list, we have this Brave Star Type 3 Trucker Jacket. This is a heavyweight denim jacket, weighs in at 21.5 ounces. It was like stiff cardboard armor when I first got it. It bruised and hurt my inner elbows when I would flex my arm. My thumbs could barely get the, the buttons done up. You know, this was a difficult jacket at first, but it got wet. I also washed it. It has really formed up over time to be a much more comfortable jacket and just Really a stellar kind of standout trucker jacket. Brave Star knows what they're doing and trucker jacket is just such a classic. With all the black I wear, I really wanted to have one in my arsenal. So there we go, five leather jackets, one leather vest, two denim jackets. You know, I really uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And again, reminder, uh, whichever one of these that you'd like to see a review of next, hit me up. I'm trying to make videos that you wanna see, so let me know.